Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bull Breakdowns here on the Guilty as Charged podcast YouTube channel. As always, I am Alex, your host, uh, and we are here to talk about the Chargers 15-man practice squad that they announced yesterday. Now, there are some big ifs and big caveats to a lot of the things that I'm going to say now, and those could come down as news notifications later in the day of guys the Chargers signed to the practice squad. So we will talk about the two trades that they made yesterday first as they relate to the practice squad and what will end up happening there. Obviously, I'm referring to Taylor Heineke, uh, who the Chargers traded uh, from the uh, Falcons for conditional sixth, and then uh, Elijah Molden, who they got for 2026 seventh round pick. So obviously, if you bring two players into the roster, two players have to come off the roster. Um, so let's get into those dynamics. And first, I do want to talk about the quarterback room. Um, given this Taylor Heineke trade and the fact that the Chargers traded a conditional six round pick for him, which is based on uh, playing time, right? That's essentially an admission that, and this trade is an admission that Heineke is QB2. Uh, I, I don't think there's much debate around it. What, that, what does that mean for Easton Stick? Uh, and particularly, what does that mean for Easton Stick in the interim? because I do think Easton stick will remain on the roster at the very least temporarily for the first week or two. Uh, eventually as injuries come and given the fact that Heineke is now the primary backup to Herbert, uh, I, I do think stick will go to the practice squad at some point. It's just a matter of when, uh, you know, and, and when that spot on the practice squad opens up. But I think that's pretty clearly where we're headed with this. But I do think he will remain, you know, in the quarterback room, kind of in the capacity that Max Duggan was last year, even though he wasn't on the roster for most of the season, um, you know, was still in that quarterback room. And by all accounts, you know, Stick has a great relationship with Shane Day, uh, has a great relationship with Justin Herbert, obviously. So I think he will be certainly kept around for this year, at least in that capacity on the practice squad spot. Uh, and, the Chargers have two practice squad spots open. And I thought it was notable when they originally announced the practice squad that they did not have a quarterback on it. Uh, and then that leads into this trade. So I do think Easton Sick at some point, uh, you know, will go to the practice squad. But they kind of foreshadowed this move with the fact that they didn't have a quarterback on the practice squad. But um, just getting to the Heineke trade briefly. I think anybody that honestly watched stick this preseason kind of knew that this needed to happen, whether it was for Taylor Heineke, whether it was for Tyler Huntley, um, you know, just some veteran backup right there who, you know, has played in big games before that could bring peace of mind to the roster. Right. And it's not that Tyler Huntley or Taylor Heineke have these amazing stats for their careers, but, um, they give you the chance to win those games, right? And I think that's what really matters, right? Because obviously, you know, and I, people bring this up to me on Twitter all the time. Oh, well, if Justin Herbert goes down, we're screwed. It's like, yeah, in the, in the macro, obviously, if he has a season-long ending injury, there's no quarterback that's going to save the Chargers, right? Um, you know, uh, the, the, the instance of Nick Foles is very unlikely, but you're looking for a quarterback on a veteran minimum deal that essentially gives you a chance to steal one, right? What if Justin Herbert is out for one week, you know, at some point during the regular season and you need to steal a game against the Broncos or something, right? Not saying you will win that game, but Taylor Heineke, um, I think just definitively on a percentage basis, you know, given that how Easton Stick played this year and given how Heineke has played in the past, he just gives you a chance uh, to sneak one of those games out that the Chargers might need if Herbert is out for a shorter period of time. Um, so I, I had no problem with this trade. Uh, and I, I do think that the Chargers needed to trade for a backup. And um, there's a part of me that's a little bit sad to see Easton Sticks regression as well, because I do legitimately think that he played pretty well in the regular season last year, given the circumstances. Um, you know, and, and stick did not have Keenan Allen. He did not have Mike Williams. He did not have, uh, I, I think even Josh Palmer for points of time. 
and the running game was bad and the offensive line was bad. And, you know, for his to his credit, you know, he kept the Chargers in some games at the very least in a kind of game managerial um, type of way. And so that's why I was a little bit surprised to just see how poor his mechanics were this preseason, some of the decisions he was making. Um, but, you know, the Chargers saw that. And this goes back to also what Jim Harbaugh said at the podium yesterday. They're never satisfied with the roster. Uh, and Jim Harbaugh doesn't like the word satisfied when he was asked about East and Sticks progression. So um, this was something that I think was, you know, kind of an inevitability um, as it relates to the practice squad. I do think that um, East and Stick will go to the practice squad at some point, despite them not having a quarterback there. Now, I do not think it'll be within the next two weeks, but I think as the season goes on, Heineken becomes more comfortable with the playbook, uh, then I do think Easton Stick will eventually head down to the practice squad. Running backs. Um, now, Isaiah Spiller makes the roster or makes the practice squad roster after getting beat out by Jarrett Patterson and Kamani Badal. Um, you know, unfortunately, I just think for Spiller, there was not enough raw production to justify giving him a spot this preseason. He had 10 carries for 13 yards and a fumble. Um, and he just didn't seem that important to the chargers to the point where they would, you know, have a fifth roster spot open for him. Now the chargers do currently have five running backs um, after claiming Hassan Haskins yesterday. I do not expect that to be, you know, long-term. Uh, I do think at some point, the Chargers probably waive Jarrett Patterson, and I think he's, you know, a potential contender for these two practice squad spots that are open. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the Chargers go with Edwards, uh, Dobbins, Vidal, and uh, Haskins on the main roster, and then Spiller and Patterson on the practice squad. So I think he's a guy in addition to JT Woods, who was also waived yesterday, in addition to Easton Stick, is somebody that can grab a practice squad spot at one point. And the coaching staff really liked Patterson's effort. I thought he had a pretty good preseason. Um, but, you know, the long-term reality is you're not keeping five running backs on the roster. So I would imagine Jarrett Patterson will be the corresponding cut, if I had to guess, with the Elijah Molden trade. Another potential option there, uh, and I, I talk about this when I mentioned the would watch the seventh receiver spot, is that it's also probably not super tenable to keep seven receivers as well, even though the Chargers did keep both Brendan Rice and Sibi Fajoko on the opening day, or not the opening day roster, but the initial 53-man spot. Um, so another potential player they could wave and bring back on the practice squad is that seventh receiver. I think it's probably much more likely it will be Jared Patterson, but I would watch that seventh receiver spot in the future. If the chargers have an injury somewhere else and they go, okay, we can go with six instead of seven and we need to put depth at X position, right? You know, whichever one uh, is kind of more injured at the time. So I would probably watch out for that. Getting to the wide receivers on the practice, uh, on the practice squad here, we have Cornelius Johnson, from Michigan, their seventh round pick, and Jalen Johnson. Um, Jalen uh, actually contributed quite a bit on special teams, uh, and he was actually PFF's highest graded special teams performer from the game against Dallas. Uh, played 13 snaps, which I think was a high uh, for him in special teams this preseason. Uh, so clearly, you know, he made his value known as a special teams guy in, in that capacity. And, uh, you know, stuck on with Ryan Ficken. So not terribly surprising to see that from Jalen Johnson, unfortunately, like Cornelius Johnson also, you know, kind of a brutal drop that ended any potential of them making the roster and trying to compete with Brendan Rice and Simi Fajoko. Um, But, you know, I, I was happy to see both of these guys brought back onto the practice squad. I do think there's something eventually in, in Cornelius that, you know, is kind of maybe a down the road thing uh, in future seasons. Obviously the Chargers will have wide receiver roster spots open up at, at some point over the years in free agency. So I don't think we've seen the last of Cornelius Johnson potentially on the main roster in that regard, obviously special teams ace in the past uh, Jalen Johnson, a special teams guy as well. But, you know, I think that their Chargers story to some extent, uh, especially for Cornelius 
given the coaching staff's interest in him, could just be beginning. So we'll see what happens with him kind of in future years down the road. Uh, tight end slash fullback. I have both of these guys, Tucker Fisk and Luke Benson, as uh, a little bit of your intermediate between like a tight end and a fullback, particularly Tucker Fisk, uh, who in this preseason, that week two game he played before he was injured in week three, um, he was blocking for Kamani Badal and opening up runs in that Rams game. Uh, so it was nice to see how, you know, Fisk was blocking uh, and he's kind of your prototypical tight end slash fullback guy that they signed shortly after they got rid of uh, Ben Mason in a uh, procedural transaction. So I think Fisk is a guy that if they need run blocking in a certain week uh, and, you know, say uh, smarts hurt uh, or, you know, Disley's hurt, whatever it might be, I think they could call up Tucker Fisk certainly. And, uh, it was nice to see them go to tight ends on this active on this practice squad roster because they only went with three on the main roster. So that is a little bit thin, certainly, if you get a guy hurt uh, there. So Dr. Fisk and Luke Benson both make the practice squad. Uh, not terribly surprising from either guy. I know Tyler's guy, uh, Luke Benson. So, you know, he sticks around for now. Offensive line. This one is a little interesting. Uh, they decided to keep two offensive linemen, uh, and there was an interesting third in a report. Alex Leatherwood uh, gets a practice squad spot. You know, now this is kind of a thing, is right as they're churning the main roster, they also have to churn the practice squad to some extent too. They can't keep all of these guys, you know, necessarily signed to the practice squad if they're going to keep bringing in new players, right? Um, and so that's where you get into like, you know, who's kind of the most cuttable in the practice squad. Totally subjective, but I thought Alex Leatherwood was pretty terrible this preseason. Um, you know, he allowed 11 pressures in three games. Uh, and I just think, you know, he doesn't necessarily have the like, oh, I'm still learning the offensive line and the playbook excuse that like a Luis Perez would have, um, that, you know, he just got here, right. Uh, when he had, you know, jumped into that preseason game. I just thought Leatherwood really lost the battle to Foster Sorrell pretty badly. Uh, didn't show much in terms of his tackle play. And I don't even think they decided to really try him at guard um, most of the preseason. And Sorrell uh, beat him pretty soundly to clinch that final roster spot. So, um, you know... I'm not going to like necessarily moan about a practice squad spot, but I think most Chargers fans would agree with me that Alex Leatherwood was not the best watch um, in in this preseason period. And if you're calling him to up to your active roster, uh, your team is probably four and thirteen, <laughs> and that will be the situation for the Chargers offensive line if they ever have to call up Alex Leatherwood. Um, Carson Barnhart, obviously Michigan guy. Uh, played, I think, 47 snaps uh, this preseason at right guard uh, specifically. So I think he is pretty clearly your interior offensive line presence uh, that would get called up if, you know, Brendan Jaime's injury or something like that on the active roster, Foster Sorrell as well, potentially, uh, you know, as an inside guy. So I think, you know, he may be a little bit more likely to get called up at some point, but Leatherwood is probably the guy you call up if there is specifically a tackle injury uh, among the starting group to bring him up as depth in some capacity. Uh, Sam Mustafer. So Sam Mustafer was reported by Mike Cleese as turning down the Broncos practice squad. He was a center that was cut by the Broncos to join the Chargers practice squad. So obviously they put that initial announcement out there yesterday. Mm -hmm. Sam Mustafer is nowhere to be seen despite that report. Um, so that'll be a little bit interesting to watch. Uh, I do think that deal will take place. You know, Mike Cleese is a really trustable reporter matter of when, if they're still flying him out to LA again, he could be a contender for one of those final two, uh, practice squad spots that's available as well. Um, so wouldn't be surprised to see him signed at some point. I do think he will probably eventually sign. A uh, matter of whether that's practice squad and when, or do they consider him for the main roster at some point? Um, you know, we'll we'll kind of wait and see where this Mustafer report goes. But credit to Mustafer, he did, um, and I uh, 
did not watch the, the Broncos preseason games, but he actually did have an 83.2 PFF grade out of uh, pass blocking, out of true pass sets last year. So I thought that was pretty interesting that, you know, the Broncos actually just had pretty good interior center depth. And, you know, the Chargers saw that with Sam Mustafer, uh, that he was, you know, just kind of the odd man out there. Uh, but if he can be, you know, essentially a third or fourth center for this Chargers team, uh, or I guess third in this case, really, um, Bozeman's been a little bit injured during the offseason process. I think it's a good way to kind of solidify your center position if Sam Mustafer does end up signing uh, to the Chargers practice squad at some point. Edge, uh, we have Trayvon Morris Brash, who obviously had a pretty good preseason for himself. Uh, I think he had something like uh, four pressures, uh, f- four tackles, or like it was like five tackles and a bunch of run stops as well, in addition to the pick six that he obviously got against Trey Lance uh, in the final preseason game, which, you know, I think solidified. Uh, in some people's minds, his spot on the roster, um, you know, but he ends up not making the roster. He ends up coming back onto the practice squad. And uh, Jesse Minter was kind of asked yesterday, you know, what did he think about Tremont Morris Brash? Just because, you know, a lot of people did think he would make the roster. And essentially, you know, Jesse Minter said he really liked him. And all of these guys are one injury away from, you know, playing on the active roster, right? And so I think that is kind of what they're keeping Tremont Morris Brash on the practice squad for uh, is, is that type of scenario. And obviously Joey Bosa has had his injury history, um, you know, so he's ultimately probably not that far away from playing. So I would say, you know, the more he continues to kind of develop on the practice squad, that's a good thing, right? I mean, you know, we saw this with H.A. Finley last year, right? A guy who spent most of the year on the practice squad, was called up, got some playing time, and now A.J. Finley is your third safety, right? And so I think the same could be true for Trayvon Morris Brash potentially next year uh, in joining the main roster, given the uncertainty around both and Max future uh, and, and given the uncertainty kind of uh, about the edge room long term as well. So if they need a guy to step up and be their third or fourth edge next year, Boris Brash couldn't end up being it. Uh, Andrew Farmer was also re-signed to the practice squad. He um, had a pretty good preseason last year, uh, and he came in for the Chargers, I think, after Joey Bosa got hurt and played the rest of their games from Week 12 to Week 18. Um, Played like 60 defensive snaps, something along those lines, and a bunch of special team snaps as well. So uh, I think they really like him as a guy that's kind of, you know, been around on the roster one of the kind of like older you know uh former chargers from last season so i think they liked kind of his experience with this uh edge group and uh you know what he can bring to the table so uh nice depth pieces all around at edge cj okoye so um you know let's talk about defensive tackle a little bit here Okoye is via the International Player Pathway Program, as you know, we've talked about before. So the Chargers, you know, when we talk about the fact that they have two extra spots left, that is why they have two extra spots, uh, is because of CJ Okoye being the extra man uh via the via the International Player Pathway Program. And um, by all accounts, CJ Okoye had a pretty good preseason. Um, I think he was one of the top five highest graded defensive chargers uh against the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, if you ask any of his teammates, including Morgan Fox, Morgan Fox brought up CJ Okoye's name, you know, multiple times as a guy who's improved the most this preseason. So I thought it was pretty telling uh, in CJ Okoye's case that the current coaching staff felt the need to keep him despite not working with him uh, in any previous capacity. So I thought it was pretty cool to see CJ Okoye ultimately make the practice squad. Granted, he's a free spot. But, you know, he's a guy that the Chargers want to continue developing. And he, uh, I think, essentially beat out Praise Olatoke, uh, who was signed earlier this offseason as a wide receiver, also via the International Player Pathway Program for that final spot. Uh, So it was nice to see that for Okoye. And he's been, you know, a great story and how he's played uh, in every preseason, you know, since he was signed uh, last year. And then you have Chris Hinton. And again, another Michigan pick. We have Hinton and we have Haskins and... Uh, Cornelius Johnson, and we have Junior Colson, and so on and so forth. 
Uh, so, you know, Harbaugh likes to, you know, continue doing the bit. So uh, I'm not terribly surprised to see Hinton on the roster. Hinton did get some playing time last year, I think in weeks 16, 17, and 18, um, you know, when he got called up to the active roster. So again, a guy who's kind of experienced with the Chargers um, and, you know, uh, obviously has the Michigan experience, um, you know, to kind of earn that respect to the coaching staff, if you want to call it that. But uh, played pretty well this preseason, I, I think, by all accounts. He had, like, I think he played 92 snaps in three games, which was, like, ninth highest uh, maybe on the team uh, in general. I think it was, like, ninth, it was like eighth, or, eighth or ninth highest on the defense. Uh, so definitely kind of an innings eater for them in the preseason. Uh, and, you know, they, they valued that uh, in terms of his performances, clearly. Uh, linebackers, Shaq Quarterman and Jeremiah Jean Baptiste. Um, I guess we'll start with what I'm surprised to not see in the linebacker group, which is, uh, Shane Lee. I did think Shane Lee played pretty well this preseason and thought, you know, obviously that he wouldn't make the active roster. Um, but given his performances, I, I did think he was a guy that kind of deserved a practice squad spot. So I was a little bit surprised to not see him back. Uh, but going into Shaq Quarterman and Jeremiah and Jean Baptiste here, uh, Quarterman, obviously a core special teamer for the Panthers, not as, or, or the Jaguars, uh, not as much defensive impact in recent years compared to his uh, rookie season. Uh, but he did play a bunch of special team snaps uh, for last year. And I think if you look at Shaq Quarterman as it relates to week one, uh, Nick Neiman on IR, obviously. And that's, I think, why the Chargers kind of have two linebackers here. Uh, when you really dig into it, but um, Shaq Quarterman is probably, you know, uh, outside of, you know, this group of chargers, maybe the one who's most likely to get called up uh, for week one uh, due to the injury to Nick Neiman. So I think you could see Shaq uh, be active for that game day, um, given that the chargers will eventually need a fifth linebacker at some point. So I, I think you could see him, uh, come up there and then Gene Baptiste I actually didn't realize this until I you know looked at the numbers after I watched the Dallas game but Jeremiah Gene Baptiste actually had 50 defensive snaps uh, against the Cowboys and 13 special team snaps uh, hence you know I think why he kind of won the coaching staff over and they and they let him play essentially you know that whole Dallas game uh, as long as he did so clearly uh, I think he did enough to impress the the coaching staff in that regard in terms of how far he was willing to go and how far they were willing to let him play uh, in order to make the 53-man roster. And then we have two more DBs. Uh, we have Robert Kennedy and Matt Hankins, both of whom came up with interceptions in that final uh, Dallas game. Uh, Matt Hankins uh, towards the end of the game. Kennedy, I think it might have been like right before halftime, third quarter. I'm not exactly sure when it happened, but uh, obviously got the interception near the goal line. Uh, and uh, yeah, but Kennedy is a little bit interesting because um, he uh, had some reps, I think, at strong safety this preseason. He kind of bounced uh, between slot and outside corner as well. So he's a guy that has that versatility. Uh, that the Chargers and particularly Jesse Minner looks for in his defenses. You know, if he's ever called upon uh, in the preseason, granted they have a bunch of DBs on the roster, so the only way that happens is injury, but and again, injuries happen. And uh, Matt Hankins, uh, who, you know, spent most of the season on the practice squad last year. Uh, so he's a guy that I think uh, Ryan Ficken is pretty comfortable with, you know, potentially if he has to play in a special teams capacity. Um, and, you know, uh, I think either of them are pretty terrific choices to have as your practice squad DBs to eventually be called up. Note to self, if you're looking for Robert Kennedy highlights on Twitter, look up Robert Kennedy chargers and don't just leave it at Robert Kennedy. Uh, I decided to do that and had a brain fart uh, earlier yesterday when it was announced he was on the practice squad and I was putting together a bolt beat article. So yeah, look up Robert Kennedy chargers, not, not necessarily Robert Kennedy. Um, all right. Well, I think that'll do it for today, but let's just get into again, some of these practice squad implications. I do think Heineke will stay on the active roster uh, and stick going eventually to the practice squad. 
Jared Patterson, I imagine, you know, by the time this video goes up, maybe we know, maybe we don't. I'm recording this earlier in the morning. Uh, so, you know, he is a guy that could uh, get cut to make room for the Elijah Molden trade. Um, and then we'll kind of see where the practice squad goes from there. Uh, we'll see who's kind of elevated uh, week one against the Raiders. I do think Shaq Quarterman is one of the likelier guys to potentially be elevated for that game, given the injury to Nick Neiman, but we'll see. Uh, thank you guys for watching me ramble about practice squad guys for 25 minutes. Really appreciate it. Week one next week, whole breakdowns should be back uh, as post game episodes for uh, each game after, you know, I watch them to go up on that Monday or the day after whenever the game is. So that'll be exciting to do for the second year in a row, I think, on this channel. So you'll still get some of my post-game reactions. Uh, so, yeah, the, the season is really about to start. Can't believe we're here. So thanks to everybody for watching. Thanks to everybody for supporting, uh, as always. And uh, 